mode. This video tutorial is about creating Pied Piper and group leader agreements, and I'm Joni Og. Once you have developed a group leader, the first thing there is to do is to have a written and signed agreement that spells out the details of the understanding between the group leader and you. There is no fixed industry agreement, so you're going to have to create your own to fit your specific needs. And the best way to do this is to do your very best to forge your own agreement and then take it to a business law attorney to put a professional legal format to it. Every state in the United States has different laws that might affect the validity of the agreement and its enforceability. Here are sections to the agreement that you should consider. Who is the agreement between? Once again, you need to make sure you understand the authority of the potential group leader. If the agreement is being entered into by an organization, be sure the person signing has the authority to legally bind the organization. Here is information you should capture in the contact section. The group leader's formal name, and this should match their passport, their complete address, telephone numbers, email addresses, social media sites, and any other contact information that you might need. You should also get a completed IRS form W-9 in case you need to send them a 1099 later. The description of group tour or cruise section is where you would describe what is being delivered with the group space. The best way to accomplish this is to attach a brochure of the tour and attach it to the agreement as attachment A. Be as specific as you need to to make sure there is complete understanding of the inclusions of the group event that's taking place. Also, make sure that your group leader signs and dates the attachment. And since you will be under contract for the group space that you are marketing, you should always set option and payment dates 10 to 15 days in advance of their actual due date. More than one agency has been stuck by having the payment dates the same as contract date with the supplier. I well remember we had a booking at the Kona Village Resort years ago for a wedding of 40 people that an agency booked with us, and she had made the deposit on her credit card. And when the final was due, she couldn't contact the booking party. She then went silent until I finally reached her at her home. She swore the group was going and just needed a few more days to finalize it. Well, of course, the wedding was off and the group did not travel. And since we had the cushion between her final date and our contract date, we escaped without any penalty. But for the agent, it was an extremely costly mistake. Group leader deposits. The agreed upon deposit and the deposit terms and conditions should go in the group leader deposit section. The status of the deposit should be clearly spelled out so that when it comes time to disperse it, it's crystal clear as to what's going to happen. Is it refundable if the group doesn't materialize? What if the group falls short of the minimum number? The deposit is meant to protect you in case of events that might unexpectedly occur and should cover 100% of your exposure. And the handling of the individual passenger deposits is critical. Each specific group departure should have its own trust account that the group leader may deposit funds into directly. This is where you would spell out the details of how the deposits will be made. And since there will be potential cash, check, or credit card, you should spell out the process in its entirety. A key consideration is whether you're going to allow deposits to be made on the group leader's credit card. This is normally a poor choice. What will happen to the deposits in case the group falls short? It should be spelled out here in great detail. And since the group leader's deposit will cover your position, the passenger deposit should be immediately refunded upon final dissolution. If there is going to be an interim payment that's going to be made between the initial deposit and the final payment, that amount should be spelled out in detail. And again, set at least 10 to 15 days between your passenger option date and your contract date. The final accounting and final payments should be executed at the same time. You should provide your group leader with the documents that you use and that are easily assimilated into your back office process for the final accounting. Obviously, it should contain the passenger's name, contact information, deposit amount and date, interim payment amount and dates, and final payment amounts and dates. This would be a minimum amount of information that you should require, but every agency's backroom is different, so you should avoid using some sort of a canned form for this event. And upon receiving the final accounting, you should verify all deposits and make sure that 
everything jives before moving forward on the liquidation of the group funds. Some group leaders will request that the trust account for the group require two signatures for money to be dispersed. This is normal, as they want to be just as sure that the money is sent to the right place and will want to also be signatory on the trust account. This protects them and their clients as well. You may or may not want to include this element, depending on how clearly your deposit clause is. But if you're facing a heavy investment and potential damages if the group leader doesn't perform, then this might signal an inclusion. And the various group leaders' responsibilities should be thoroughly spelled out here. And refer to the tutorial on Pied Pipers and group leaders to see the possibilities of what might be included. But suffice to say that you want to document what your group leaders are responsible for. You should also document the agency's responsibilities so that everyone understands who is doing what to whom. The group leader remuneration section is where you would document the agreement between you and the group leader in terms of free trip requirements and any incentive program. All details of what would happen in case the group fizzles or grows beyond the anticipated block of space being held should be noted here. You should be extremely precise here. Some companies make it quite easy to take on the task of organizing groups and also can be quite rewarding without making too much of a financial commitment. You might want to check out YMT Vacations Remuneration Program as a potential model depending on what your business plans are. Your agency marketing support should be spelled out clearly here. Most agencies provide an original copy of flyers, brochures, and travel documents, and the group leader would then generate what he needs for the group at his expense. You may want to detail the various elements that make up the marketing effort. Having a group-specific website with the documents on it for the group is really going to help the group leader immensely. And don't wait for the final accounting to see how things went. Schedule several review dates where the group leader provides you with the progress of the final accounting. Check to make sure the group leader is on track to fill the space. Set a critical review date and where the group leader should be in terms of signing new members for the group. You should try to help the group leader reach their full potential, but if it becomes obvious that they're going to fall short, you can always amend the agreement to allow you to find a second group leader for the group to ensure its success. This is not at all uncommon. And because of the embedded variable marketing and operations allocation, you're going to be able to easily invest in a second group leader. Your attorney will add the legal ease to your contract or agreement past this point, which will vary from state to state. And here are some things that you might want to consider. The choice of legal venue. If you do not indicate the pre-chosen legal venue in the agreement, then you may have a situation where you're located in San Diego and are being sued by a group leader that lives in the state of Maine. You can easily see the disadvantages to this scenario. Elect a specific legal venue that is the most convenient to you and your attorney. To arbitrate or not to arbitrate. Many contracts use arbitration clauses to avoid the cost of litigation. And this is usually the case where the person choosing arbitration may have an attorney on retainer or fully employed by them. Here is the difference between arbitration versus filing a lawsuit. Most disputes between group leaders and agencies fall way short of the small claims court maximum allowable amount that can be sued for. You should know this amount as it will make a difference in your decision to use arbitration or not. Kentucky, as an example, has a maximum limit for a suit of $2,500, while Georgia, Minnesota, and North Dakota have $15,000 caps, and Tennessee has a whopping $25,000 limit. This is an important thing because anyone can file a small claims action without using an attorney and for nominal filing fees. And to make things worse, small claims courts are notorious as being the people's court, and judgments will normally be challenged in superior court, which will cost a good amount of money. On the other hand, if arbitration is selected, the person filing the complaint will have to retain an attorney, which is a detriment to filing as there may be funds invested to retain an attorney. Your attorney will advise you of the most prudent way to go. You may also want to include an indemnification clause depending on what kind of tours that you're going to operate. If your group leaders are taking groups into third world nations on adventures that are riddled with risk, 
you certainly want your group leader to indemnify you against potential litigation. Your attorney will certainly make suggestions on the legal ease for your agreement, and you should listen to all of them. Since your attorney will be the one who defends you in any potential litigation, you should allow him or her to build the agreement for that purpose. So let's review the key points of this tutorial. Always have signed group leader agreements. Have your attorney review and edit your group leader agreement. Use the group leader agreement to protect your interests. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial on group leader agreements and have found it helpful. If you did, why not give it a like and a share? And if you would like to be notified as we add more video tutorials, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, thanks for being with me today.